Tonight, we're here to celebrate um, and recognize the vital role of small businesses on our high streets and in our economy across the country. We are proud to host this reception in, par in partnership with Asian Trader, uh, and I'm glad to see so many people from Asian Trader magazine and the group, including Kalpesh, uh, the, the key figure <laughs> in our communities. Um, <laughs> Asian, Trader, Asian Trader is a publication that has been at the heart of the UK's retail sector, championing the contribution of Asian-owned convenience stores and retail businesses for many, many years. They continue to highlight the importance of small businesses in keeping our communities uh, thriving, and we are grateful for their great work. It's also fantastic to see so many MPs. Many more of them are still on their, on their way to join us because there was three line whip and lots of votes taking place in Parliament, and they will be joining us here tonight, and many councillors, including Councillor Graham from Wandsworth, is here tonight. When we found the SME for Labour, many people have asked, what do SMEs have got to do with Labour? They saw Labour as the party of industry, the NHS, and the public service only. But we knew and continue to believe that Labour must also be the party of small business. Small businesses employ the majority of the workforce in the country, generate billions of GDP, and create countless apprenticeships and jobs. More than that, they provide the social glue in our communities, keeping high streets vibrant and giving opportunities to immigrants and others who rely on small businesses as a gateway into the workforce. SMEs are essential uh, to our mission for growth, innovation, and local wealth. The values of, of small businesses, fairness, hard work, community, justice, are all labor values. It's why we in SME for Labor are committed to ensuring that the voice of small business is heard and supported. This reception also gives us a wonderful opportunity to connect, network, and discuss the challenges ahead. There is important work to do uh, as we tackle the weakened economy, rebuild public services, and strengthen our communities. But for tonight, let's enjoy ourselves, make new friends, reconnect with old ones, and talk about how we can continue to collaborate, collaborate for the benefit of SMEs and the communities they serve. Thank you. Now, uh, I, I'd like to introduce our first speaker, um, Ferial Clark, MP uh, for Enfield North and the Minister for AI and Digital Government. Ferial. Thank you very much, Ibrahim. Um, you were supposed to have someone more interesting me than me. You were supposed to have uh, one of the ministers from the Treasury Department, but sadly, uh, they couldn't be here, so you've got the minister for AI. But hey, I say every business is a tech business uh, because all businesses use um, IT to a certain degree. But look, you couldn't have a better advocate for small businesses than Ibrahim. Ibrahim has been banging the drum for SMEs for years across, I don't think there is a single MP who doesn't, who doesn't understand the value of um, SMEs to our community. So I am absolutely massively grateful to the work that Ibrahim does for SMEs up and down the country. And I want to say a massive thank you to the Asian Media Group as well and the Asian Trader for all the work they've been doing for years representing the um, retailers up and down the country. Ibrahim has already said it, small businesses, SMEs are the backbone of our economy. They provide jobs, they provide livelihood, they regenerate our uh, town centres. Without small businesses, without SMEs, without our small retailers up and down the country, our high streets will be dead. Just think back to the time of COVID. During COVID, our small businesses, our small businesses, our corner shops, were, were the lifeline to for our communities. So they have a huge, huge, huge benefit to our community. I think the major retailers have huge benefits, but they don't know the people that live in their communities, like the corner stores do. They don't know they, you know, when the old lady doesn't come to visit after a week, and you know, they don't, they don't worry about it. So they are a massive asset to our community. So it was really worrying when you had a government who decided that retail theft 
who decided that shoplifting wasn't actually an issue, who decided that there had to be a value to how much was missing from your shops, value £200. £200 over like every day, over a week, is a huge amount to our local stores. It's not being able to get a police visit when your shop's being, when you're being targeted by crime, organised crime in some cases. And that is going to change under this government. That is going to change. We are going to remove, we are going to change that law that says that there is a, there has to be a limit to how much is stolen from your shop before we come to visit. We are going to make sure that we have community police, actually, actual community police, policing our high streets so our shoppers and our businesses can once again have confidence that their crime, what the Tories um, label as low level crime, will again be taken serious. And I know it's going to make a huge difference to the small businesses and convenience stores up and down the country. Look, I'm not going to stand here talking for any more longer, but just to say that a... All right. Right, I almost stopped myself from talking. But just to say that you have incredible advocates in 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 any community like Ibrahim, like the Asian trader, or that I've just met and um, McDonald's, but also MPs and some of my colleagues are here in the room tonight. There are huge um, advocates for you guys because some of us have come from families where you know we grew up with our families running convenience stores. We know, we, we've experienced it, we've lived it, and we live in communities where we rely on our uh, small businesses. But I just say a massive thank you. Please don't stop demanding from us as politicians what you rightly deserve. We are on your side. You are the backbone of our economy. Thank you very much and have a wonderful night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Can everybody hear me okay? I'm holding the microphone for the correct position. Um, Asian Media Group um, is the, the largest Asian publisher in the UK. And it got its start um, back in the 60s when immigration from the subcontinent from Africa began. Um, and Asian trade began 40 years ago, next year, um, back in 1985. And its purpose was to, to try and unite the retailers, the manufacturers, and the wholesalers in this, this new sector, this growing retail channel that was going to be known as convenience. Um, we've been advocating on behalf of our readers now um, for many decades, and um, we reach approximately 80% of every convenience retailer that's in business in the UK mainland and Northern Ireland. That's 40,000. And that means that we get a lot of feedback from people who are concerned about the direction in which conditions are traveling. Um, and that's in two, three main ways. First of all, um, there's the business case. Things changed with lockdown. After lockdown, and indeed during lockdown, I think, oh, come back to you. During lockdown, the convenience channel was thrust into a, into a completely new position. It became more than ever a lifeline for the communities, for the elderly, for the less well-off, for the less transportable population of the country. So convenience stores became a much more a community pillar. What also happened, especially after the COVID lockdown, was there was a surge in crime along with the cost of living prices, and we're still living with those consequences. Now, convenience stores sell several things. They sell tobacco, they sell alcohol, they sell sweets, they sell the sins. Now, these sins are often legislated against by government who is trying to look after the health of the nation. But what that does is it puts our retailers right in the spear point of suffering when it comes to extra laws and extra restrictions on them trying to do their business. This has happened with tobacco over a long period. It began with banning of tobacco ads, then it began with banning of display of tobaccos in store, 
and then it, it carried on with massive excise increases um, to the extent that, that um, they started to lose revenue. Luckily, something much better than tobacco came along, and that was called vape. And vape rapidly began to replace the consumption of tobacco for our retail. For our retailers. The government is introducing progressive legislation to try and eliminate the use of tobacco in the UK. Um, that's been going very well, but it's been going very well especially because vape has been helping it along. The latest um, proposals, including in the upcoming vape and tobacco bill, which I believe is in the report stage at the moment, is that a generational ban is going to be imposed on tobacco. Now, almost everybody who's not in the government thinks this is a very bad idea. Um, not least the retailers, because it's going to put the onus on them to establish the exact age of somebody who comes into the store. Bear in mind they're already dealing with excessive and elevated levels of abuse and crime in their stores, and they believe that this is just merely going to add to the burden of abuse and violence that they have to suffer. Because they're going to have to ask people whether they are of the age at which they're allowed to buy tobacco. And in the future, that's going to mean trying to determine whether someone's 27, 28, 37, 38 years of old. Can you buy tobacco or not? And it's a terrible dilemma for the retailers who have to try and refuse somebody who might have a drink in them, who might have already become accustomed to cigarettes. I think the solution that's being suggested to raise the age immediately from 18 to 21 Yes, yes, questions later, questions later. <laughs> Sorry? Oh, I see. Well, we do what we do at the Asian Trade Awards. <laughs> Good? Okay, we carry on. Uh, so, we're here to complain that the generational ban, which is now in report stage in the House of Lords, has to be opposed by anybody who has half a brain because it's going to be a disaster. It's going to directly threaten the business and the physical being of our retailers, okay? There's also another part of the upcoming bill, which concerns vapes. Um, part of what they want to do with vapes is to ban, first of all, the flavours. They want to ban uh, the advertising, and they want to put it behind the cupboard like they do with cigarettes. Now, bear in mind, vape is what is majorly responsible for the drop in tobacco consumption, which is what politicians want, because tobacco combustion is what hurts you and gives you diseases. Vape has the advantage of no combustion, so according to Public Health England, it's 95% at least less harmful. So why on earth try to ban vape? That's like saying, look, we've got a terrible alcohol problem. It leads to liver disease, work absence, wife beating, all this terrible stuff, and suddenly something comes along for alcohol which completely solves the problem. And then we'll try and ban it, because this zero beer is a gateway drug to alcohol. That's the situation with vapes, as an analogy. Okay? Now what the government should be doing is laying off vapes and encouraging everybody to switch from tobacco to vape. Forget the generational ban. If we're allowed, if we're allowed if we're allowed to sell a legal substance, which tobacco still is, do not play to the audience and who will save the children, but by, by putting silly laws, ideological laws, that only restrict business, threaten retailers, and don't help the public. So the government needs a reality sandwich when it comes to looking at what laws, act, laws actually work. Now, what we would suggest instead is that the generational ban should be dropped altogether. The 18 to 21 ban gives you three years of very, very, very angry teenagers who were able to buy a packet of cigarettes last week and now can't. So kind of concertinas, the effects of the generational ban for three years. So if you're willing to deal with that, fine. But I would say if it's a legal substance, at 18 you're an adult, buy it, right? You've already put up the, the excise duty on tobacco so much that almost nobody can afford it. That's why they're changing to vapes. Encourage vapes. Cut the excise on vape. Get everybody on to vape. Cut 95% of the bad effects. Go with that. But this all needs to be communicated to the government in the report stage. I don't know exactly when the bill's going to uh, go to committee or to the House. Um, 
I looked this afternoon and couldn't see a particular date. But we all have to come together now. Asian trader advocating on behalf of retailers who don't want to get abused any more than they already are. Right? Who are already been beaten up, who are already suffering. The other thing, that's the other thing, I think I remember, is that with every extra law and restriction on the trade of legal goods, you only succeed in increasing the illicit trade. Right? With every law that's passed, the illicit trade has grown. And it's now at such an extent that 80% of people say that they would buy illicit tobacco if it was offered them. Of course they would. Have you seen the price of tobacco and cigarettes? So they would do that. That's law-abiding people. At the same time, the profits are so immense that illicit gangs are now almost at the point of metastasization in the economy of the UK. The police, who anyway act like supermodels and won't get out of bed for more, less than 200 quid to come and deal with shoplifters, are now dealing not only with retailers, now dealing not only with shoplifters whose deterrence has been completely wiped out, but are now having to deal with customers who can get their goods more cheaply elsewhere and that are completely immune to legislation. As in America, they say, listen, if you want to ban guns, the only people who will have guns are criminals. And it's the same in this country. If you ban tobacco, restrict it, restrict vapes, all you're going to do is encourage mafias who are going to take over the commerce of the country. Not only to the detriment of retailers, but also to the detriment of the treasury who are going to lose out on all the tax they could have got, and to the detriment of civil society. And as with the generational ban, if you insist on denuding the rights of certain people merely based on their accident of birth, you are creating an underclass that will only seek to corrode the civil institutions and the civil sense of the UK, which I would suggest is still one of the best in the world. And I think that's all I have to say. I would like to call Zubin Ahmed, MP for Glasgow Southwest, to say a few words before they leave because there are still words taking place in Parliament, so our politicians will have to go. So, call Zubin Ahmed to say a few words. Um, good evening, everyone. It's a real pleasure to be here and your token spot for the evening. I've not brought the famous import from Scotland from whiskey, so I think you have to just do with what you've got at the bar already. Can I say a great thank you to Ibrahim, who's a great supporter of small businesses, of me personally, uh, and I'm so grateful for all the support that he's given me over the years. Can I, can I also thank all small businesses up and down the country? When I was 14 years old, my, my first job was working in a shop in the south side of Glasgow, and it gave me so many life skills made me meet so many interesting people. In fact, it made me meet a, a doctor that inspired me then to become a doctor and then a vascular surgeon, which is where the background I came from. And I just want to let you know that now you have a Labour government, you have a government that's on your site that understands the potential for small businesses, how that's going to be the main engine of our growth in this country. We've had the sermon about vapes, I can't really beat that. But what I can say to you is you also have a listening ear in someone like me who works in the health department. I understand that sometimes this legislation can be particularly onerous on individual small businesses. You bear the brunt of the anger of the individual customer and we totally need you in the room when we are legislating to have your voice in the centre of that legislation to make sure it's impactful and doesn't overly burden individual uh, convenience retailers out there that are doing such a grand job to grow our economy and also the, that are part of the social fabric of our society. So thank you so much. I'm delighted to have one-to-one -one conversations with you over this issue or anything else as the night progresses, but I'll let you carry on with your evening. Thank you. Thank you, Zubir. Now I would like to call um, Suresh Patel, Executive Councillor from the Federation of Independent Retailers. I thank SME Labour and Asian Trade for giving me this opportunity to speak this evening. Sorry. The last government passed many laws that lacked common sense, did not listen to our voices, gave local gangs a more opportunity to prosper then. How uh, prosper then than those community retailers? That was why many of, it, many of us voted for change, voted to be heard, voted to be respected. But is the Labour Party listening? Well, I hear them speak 
all of the actions they will take against smoking, massive tax hikes, and banning adults from buying from my shop, the so-called gem ban. I hear nothing about the government action against the crime gangs who roam the streets selling counterfeit cigarettes. On the contrary, Minister, the government is incentivizing the crime gangs because they keep pushing my prices higher and higher. I cannot compete with the cut price tags offered by these criminal gangs. In my constituency in West Lancashire, it is estimated more than a third of my cigarettes, a third of cigarette sales, smoked are not bought from my shop. They are bought illegally. Or as a customer tells me, they bought in a suitcase by from Turkey or the Canary Islands, full to the rim, much cheaper than cigarettes. Who can who can blame them? And now Labour wants to bring back Rishi Sunak's ban on adults buying tobacco from my shop. 30% of my shop turnover comes from tobacco sales. So I walk with business whilst the crime gangs still roam and the Tories still bring back cheap facts from holiday abroad. People will still smoke, they just won't, won't be buying from me, the local retailer, illicit trade. I'm appealing to the Labour members of Parliament here this evening. Step up enforcement and stamp out the crime gangs who are undermining our business and our communities. Throw out this so-called gem ban and ban on legal tobacco sales. A ban on legal tobacco sales for my local shop, like mine. There is no, there is no such thing as gem ban. Why? Because smokers would still always buy from abroad, from the illegal sources. Instead, raise your legal age limit to 21. Retail can enforce this, because we currently do enforce an age 18. Please hear us. Don't vote for any law that dis disadvantages and rewards the criminal gangs. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Shereen. Thank you. Um, I ran a cost cutter store in some survey for the last 14 years and have been a retailer for over 35 years, uh, running a four code before that all being award winning first class businesses. Retail is in my DNA and many have been and have been in, my, in this business for a long time. We have seen multiple government changes. We have seen many governments come and go. We have been through recessions. We are a resilient bunch, right? But uh, the first attack on us convenience stores was the relaxation of the Sunday trading laws. So what did the corporates do? They were not just happy with that. They started opening corner shops. So they are everywhere. We, we are facing them right up and down the country. We are still there. Like Carl Page said, we are nearly, um, I mean, for 53,000 convenience stores in the United Kingdom, which is amazing. So recently, there have been many ideological policies coming out of Westminster. It's about the, it was the sugar tax, the high fat sugar salt, and now they started the tobacco and baits bill. So bit by bit, they are eroding our income, our way of life, our businesses. And we as a business, we as retailers are joined together and in one voice make it known that we want to be consultant, we want, we want to be uh, in the discussions about the future because tobacco, whether we love it or loathe it, is a big income stream for many shops and many are going to lose their businesses and as well as um, you know the staff who have worked there for years and years and in many communities people are going to lose the only bit of, uh, you know, bit of community uh, where they can meet and meet people. The, the tobacco and waves bill is really a very poorly thought of bit of regulation, uh, especially with the generational tobacco ban. Uh, it's going to bring, already we are fighting crime, and, 
quite a high uh, rate. Uh, shop, shop crime is massive. The police is underfunded. Uh, and, um, and training standards, they don't exist. My, my training standards, Surrey, is combined with Buckinghamshire. So can Buckinghamshire and Surrey uh, training standards manage such a big area? So the web, web guys are multiplying illicit web is everywhere. So if tobacco is banned, it will be legal to be sold in the country. If we are not allowed to sell them, it's going to go underground. The black market is going to thrive. And this, this is going to be a big problem. No one's going to police the internet. The lady uh, minister from AI, she know that. People can buy anything on the internet now. And tobacco is definitely going to go that way. Vapes already. Anyone can tick their age and buy anything they want online. So why are you preventing people who are making a living, paying our taxes, and most of all, tobacco brings in 7.8 billion revenue to this country, right? So the minister, I'm afraid he's not here. It's an own goal. They are going to lose that stream of revenue. I hope they're going to think, rethink this policy again. The night will continue. We are here till late, so please do enjoy your time. Get to know each other. Drinks are still available, I think, and there might be some food coming too. Enjoy your night. So, Asia Media Group was started by my parents in 1968. We've been operating here now uh, in, in various sectors. We reach over 10,000 pharmacists, over 40,000 convenience stores. We reach most of the hoteliers, care homes, and lots of the business operators. So for us, the Asian community dominate the high street, and it's therefore it's very important that we have a voice where it matters. I think a lot of the government legislation is uh, enacted without listening to the small businesses. So the work that SME for Labour do is actually essential, because if you look at the communities, most of the communities have a small retailer, they have a news agent, a in store, Indian restaurant and a pharmacist. The majority of these retailers are run by the Asian community and we don't really have a strong voice. That's why we need SME for Labour. Hi, it's Dr. Zubair Ahmed here. I'm the Member of Parliament for Glasgow South West and the Parliamentary Private Secretary for the Department of Health. It's really wonderful to be here at another Labour for SME event with retail traders from all across the country and Asian trader magazines. SME for Labour gives these traders a real voice into the heart of government and helps us to formulate policy that is not only efficacious, but works for retailers and for the industry. I know that many of you are thinking about what Labour is going to do for small business. And I'm here to reassure you that we see you as the engine of the growth of this country. We want to help you grow, we want to help you to reach into economies and into markets you've never been in before. And when we regulate certain sectors of the industry, we want to bring you forward as our partners in that regulation. So regulation works for you and it works for the public. Thank you so much and have a great evening.